Recording. We're recording. Yes, we are. Chris is running off. <laughs> okay, so we're going to give you guys a quick run around on the Toyota Audis three wheel drive drift car. Jason, 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 just, 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 you stop there. Why are you, like, like speaking about this car? Why shouldn't I be? Because it's my job. How, how did this become your job? Because I've been with Chris longer than you. That's bullshit. We were just talking about how I was since the E36, <laughs> and you were like 12. But I knew the, about E36. You did it. You didn't even have a camera there, guy. I actually did. You didn't know. You didn't I know. Did. You had your father's Sony I, camera. See, that's how much I, I know I about you. I still had a camera. I still had a camera. I'm older than you and I'm bigger than you. Doesn't matter. I win. I've got two legs. <laughs> <laughs> Just because of that, I'm gonna film it. <laughs> Chris, what have we got? T tell us about this car. So, I, I don't know what else to say. It's a Toyota Audis. It's supposed to be a front wheel drive car, but it's not. Correct, yeah. So this is a 2008 spec Toyota Audis. Um, the biggest thing was I, I wanted it to be modern looking, so we put the 2017 Toyota Aorus facelift, which is the same as Frederick Osbo's previous Toyota yep. Corolla that they had, or the Corolla IM is what we call it. Um, and yeah, we wanted to keep still the basically the resemblance of a normal car on the outside. We still obviously got a body kit going on and all that, but the idea is, you know, when it's done and completed with the livery and everything on the side, I want it to be a little bit more uh, re resemblance to a normal car. Let's show what makes it different obviously it's got no windscreen in it yet yeah um we're gonna come out on this way you can get a good angle on these wheels talk to us about these wheels so these are compromotive replica wheels um we basically got it from shava max um yep. he's got a, i think he's got one of the best selections in the, in the cape town at the moment um but we're running a <laughs> quite a big combination of macgyvers <laughs> underneath it um, basically, it's a speedy web design suspension, a Bobby Bruce knuckle. Yep. It's running a um, VW Passat hub mm -hmm. with a Honda uh, Prelude VTEC uh, disc and Toyota Aorus calipers. Okay. He had so to add. He, he had to add the VTEC side. I had to put a V. I've got something of a VTEC. <laughs> something of a VTEC, and that's about where it stops. Though. Yeah. Um, we're not going to talk about this yet. We'll get back to there. These are, I'm assuming, intakes for so you can breathe. Uh, yeah, so the whole idea, you'll notice when we get to the back as well, we're trying to separate the, the, the cockpit from the, um, the rear of the car. Yeah. So what we found in, in the previous cars, again, this is all a development thing we keep going through. We're trying to split the, the pressure, the, cab the cabin pressure to the back so we can prevent smoke inside the cockpit. Okay. Um, we've had that issue in a few cars already where, you know, there's so much smoke generated, you can't, sometimes on the second run, you can't see where you're going. Okay. So, and obviously in a car, you need to see where you're Absolutely. going. So. Um, so yeah, that's just to add some sort of flow to the front. Okay. All of this, also metal. All, all Everything metal. Everything is metal. We've got metal doors, metal bonnet, metal fenders, plastic original front bumper, and a plastic original back bumper. So the idea is to keep it, you know, easy to replace. Okay. There's some carbon fiber on the dash. Well, the dash is all carbon fiber, but we'll get to that now. So metal, metal, legs and windows, original glass window at the back. What's all this, guy? What's all this stuff? So. The, the front specifically is to get, again, the cabin pressure to the front of the vehicle. Yeah. Um, the back is to get uh, cooling to the rear of the radiator. So normal drift cars, obviously, that are not hatchbacks, um, we generate uh, flow from the side windows. Um, we didn't really want to disrupt too much on the side because we still want to have the doors operational. Um, we're still going to have a filler neck and everything on the inside. So the easiest solution I thought of is why not get ventilation through the roof? Yeah. Frederick Osbo again, Step Papa Darkest, they get it from underneath the vehicle. So yeah. it's not to say it's impossible, it's yeah. just how you work it. And we, we try to get things a little bit differently. So we've got two coming from the, from the front. So if you've got a, a car's driving in a straight line, but we also wanted two on each side coming from a, an angle, because obviously drift cars go sideways. Yeah. So and obviously that's, that's supplying air to the radiator, which we're going to get to now. Correct. Coming through to the back, same movie style wheels over here. Plastic bumper, metal, metal. Not going anywhere <laughs> at all. So, speak to us about the, yeah. the, so, the so, wing. so wings or end plates really. In in drifting, a wing doesn't do anything. Um, yeah. The wing is there 
either for a showpiece or it's to generate some downforce in a straight line but that's it's irrelevant because you don't need it you're not going straight over here it's so, basically providing you with some rigidity uh from from that point yes and also uh, the biggest thing is deflecting the smoke um the, uh, the the second thing is the m plate you've got certain measurements that you've got to meet yeah but if you can imagine a car going sideways your wind resistance is coming this way through although it is a big car we've got a big surface area yeah we're adding to that so it basically something with a bigger m plate the, the idea is if you overdo it going into a corner, it's there to sort of stabilize or yeah. straighten the car to a, a certain point. Oh, nice. Can we pop this open quickly? Yeah, sure. Wait, can we, can we show people what's going on here? Okay, we can stand here. We can stand here. Dylan, get just no, the radiator. I'm pretty really sure that's in the shot. Okay, let's get it onto this side. We spoke basically this half is the same as that half, but we want to get inside over here. Okay, we're going to do some cutaways of this. So what I'm going to point to here now is, what's that? So that's part of the fuel system. So yep. we're still waiting on the other end to come in, um, which is going to have the filler, the filler neck to okay. it as well. And this side is your surge tank. So okay. we hold about 25 liters in total. Um, the biggest thing is with a drift car, you've got uh, you know, a weight transfer, and fluid transfer going yep. left to right. So we need to have a surge tank okay. um, and all that to prevent fuel surge. So the okay. car doesn't cut out. So. Then we're talking about the roll cage. Now this particular roll cage, I'm seeing says Toyota Motorsport. Correct. So the car is originally um, from Toyota Motorsport Direct, which is all speed. Um, it's got a full chromoly roll cage um, and a fully seam welded chassis. So basically what happened was they took the cars off of the production line before it is even transferred into a normal car. Okay. And they put uh, a proper spec FIA approved chromoly roll cage in. Nice. Um, so the car's rigidity and weight is obviously strong and down. So, okay. Yeah. Let's check out the front of the car. What do we do? Dylan, come check this out over here. You guys can see all of these numbers here. This is track width and wheel spacing. So this is the standard Taurus. Yeah, the original 2008 spec Taurus. So front wheels was 1535. It is currently 216. 2 meters 160 is what Correct. it's reading. Yes. So it's a lot front, bigger. Front That's wheels. front. Yeah. Back wheels were 1535, which is the same as the front. It's currently 1950. So this is a lot wider than standard. Correct. The track, is this the current track width? Yeah, so that's the current track width of this car, and that's of a standard. That's basically your center okay. wheel to center wheel, so yep. front to back. Um, obviously, it's increased slightly because of your, yep. your modified um, lower front. It's increased by exactly 91, just under 100 more. Pretty much, yes. Yeah. Oh, nice. And yes. then that's sort of what a S13 would be as a reference. So people yep. always say that a, the car's short, you know, yep. visually, oh, how's it going to drift? Or it's a bit boxy, but it's it's not, you know, it's actually longer than what a standard S13 would be. So, but yeah, so a standard S13 is 2 meter 475. Correct. This you, is you 2 have. meter 691. So, so if you had to wheel include to wheel, a, a wise fab kit argument, say front and rear on an S13, it would probably come to about a very similar measurement. Yeah. So it looks a lot smaller, but it's actually not. Correct. You see, the thing with this car, you don't have an overhang. So you've yeah. got wheel, wheel, and then you've got and the, a the, short bump. Right, in the, bump the right yeah. in the corner. Okay. Correct. Check out in the inside. I think Dylan can just have a quick sweep through the inside there. Good so sweep. what you guys are looking at is a fuel tech management system, pop-off steering wheel, pedal box with, well not carbon fiber. Kind of you sort of. Can you hone in that pedal box or is it a bit dark? No, we can try and get in there. Look at that brake pedal has been chopped off. Function. For function. Okay, let's just <laughs> let Chris chat about that quickly. Uh, so Chris, what I'm seeing over there, obviously you got the brake pedal chopped off and it's right below your steering column over here. Was that the reasoning behind that? Yeah, so as everything's been so far with this bolt, everything's custom. Yeah. So we had to, it's running a Toyota D4D steering rack and um, it's a custom shaft that we had to make. But to get the right angle and measurements, that's sort of where the shaft had to be. Okay. And the pedal setup versus where your seat's positioned, that's sort of comfortable that I feel where the pedal should be. But okay. the small minute uh, alteration that we had to do was to just cut the top end of the, the pedal off because... Well, it's a brake pedal, you don't need it anyway. Yeah, you're not supposed to be on the brakes. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got completely carbon fiber dash made specifically with this car, um, which you guys need to put all your instrumentation in. You've got the fuel tech management system, and it's hydraulic everything, it's hydraulic pedals, it's hydraulic e-brake as well. 
Correct. We're running obviously dual calipers at the back, uh, Wilbur calipers with a nameless performance handbrake. Okay. Um, and yeah, everything else, brake pedals is uh, set up, clutch and brake is hydraulic, so you're the reason for a pedal box, you can split the lines front to back and you've got a brake bias adjuster, so you can change the feel if nice. you want a left foot brake for whatever reason. You Which know. is exactly what you need for the lifting, yeah. that kind of adjustability as well. Correct. And everything is, you know, including the switches and panels and everything, that's all close to the driver. So yeah. previous cars, you always had to lean or unclip the belts. Idea is to keep everything simple so you can get to it quick. Cool. And okay, these aren't in here now, but you guys are getting carbon fiber door cards? We've got the carbon fiber, carbon fiber door cards <laughs> <laughs> that we're gonna um, basically put in. Um, we just gotta see if it's gonna fit. Um, if not, we'll put the normal sort of, you know, Lex and stuff that we do, but right. um, I think that'll compete with the, with the carbon fiber dash. Okay, let's go down to the front. Let's look at the money shot. Let's go for the engine. So here we're running a um, quite a unique setup. That's uh... Yeah, so you guys thought you were going to see the motor. <laughs> no, you guys are not going to see the motor. <laughs> not anytime soon. Not, well, maybe oh, soon. Yeah, I don't maybe, know. maybe, maybe, maybe soon. Like Depends. you said, 70% done. 70% done, but a 30% worth of a lot of stuff. Yeah. And that's a lot of late nights for Ian and Chris. Guys, um, we're going to do a complete build breakdown. We just wanted to show you a little bit, and Chris wanted to show you a little bit about what's gone into the car so far. Chris is behind the camera. Like, Chris, I know I don't want to put you, you know, on, on the block, but when, roughly? I know the car was supposed to have been done already, but have you got more or less a time frame? Do you have a deadline? Yeah, so we, um, we are supposed to be done already, but we should be done hopefully for around 4, it's which August. is at Desi Raceway, so yeah. around about August. August. Yeah. So, look, around about August time, when the car is completely done, there will be a complete unveiling. We'll do everything we did now, but when the car has got this livery, we'll show you the motor, which is absolutely insane. A lot of you guys. I still, I still can't believe that, we're gonna, that they thought you were going to show Yeah, I thought you were going to show you the motor now. Sorry, guys. No. Sorry. Sorry. So, um, what you guys need to do is follow Long Junior. Just, dude, what's your Instagram handle? At Long underscore Junior. At L O N G underscore J N R. J N R. J N R. Follow Chris on Instagram and on Facebook. You'll see a lot more about the car. He's been posting little pictures here and there. But we will see you again for the full build breakdown of the Audis X. Audis X? Chorus. 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 The Chorus X, yeah. X yeah. slash Honda <laughs> slash every other part that's on that car. Yeah. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs>